Right now we're going to a session that I personally have been looking forward to. And um, in this session we'll be talking about um, one world connected with blockchain. That is making the world a smaller place for all through blockchain. And taking on this is someone I admire so much, the CEO of Blockchain for All and co-founder and former president BSB Blockchain Association, Jimmy. Jimmy Nguyen, CEO, Blockchain for All, co-founder and former president, BSV Blockchain Association. Jimmy Nguyen is one of the world's top blockchain advocates. His new company, Blockchain for All, provides advisory, education, and technology solutions to help enterprises and government entities implement blockchain applications. He is a renowned public speaker, media commentator, an advocate for making blockchain useful as a data technology rather than just for speculative cryptocurrency investment trading. Jimmy led information of the Switzerland-based BSV Blockchain Association, Bitcoin Association for BSV, and served as its global founding president until September 2022. Using the original Bitcoin protocol, BSV is a massively scaled blockchain that efficiently handles high transaction volume and greater data capacity at fast speed for low transaction fees, capabilities needed to deliver distributed ledger applications at enterprise and government levels. Across the world, Jimmy has advanced education on the need for blockchain scaling, real utility, and legal compliance, speaking to government, business and technical leaders across many countries in North America, the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Previously, Jimmy served as CEO of Enchain Group, a worldwide leader in research and development of blockchain technologies, with one of the industry's largest patent portfolios and was chair of its strategic advisory board. In January 2020, he was recognized as one of the most influential individuals in blockchain by the Tungensec, an information security research company. SFOX has listed Jimmy as one of the BSV people you need to know. Jimmy graduated from the University of California, Los Angeles at the age of 19, BA Communication Studies, specialization in mass communication, magna cum laude, 1992, and graduated law school at the age of 22 from the University of Southern California Law Center, Juris Doctor, 1995. With the Rouse Innovation, let's make welcome Jimmy Nguyen. Connection. Life is all about connections for family, friends, career, profession, business, even technology. And it is what blockchain allows us to do, create human connection and connection to truth, data, and efficiency. When I am here today, I actually want to talk about the connection to my father, which we'll be seeing soon once they get my presentation up. My father, as so those of you who were here yesterday learned, was born in Vietnam just like I was. He came from a poor family in the middle of nowhere, had to start working at a young age when his father died and he was the eldest son, put himself through school, the South Vietnamese military, and then became a judge, a federal judge in the South Vietnam government. And it is part of a, a number of connections I've learned I've had to my father. And he grew up, got married, had four children, including me, his baby son, uh, born in Saigon in South Vietnam in 1972, if you can believe it. I just celebrated my 50th birthday, five zero, five decades on this planet. Um, and it was quite a fun time with my friends. And um, that's me with my dad in Vietnam. So my connection to my dad actually grew much further once we came to the United States. Because when we came to the United States, he didn't speak any English. The federal judge had to take whatever odd jobs he could, including his first job as an orderly in a nursing home. And then he tried to put himself into the position to take the California bar exam and become a lawyer in the United States, but was unable to do so because law is such a language-based profession, and he spoke no English when he arrived in the United States. 
So he gave up on that particular dream of becoming a lawyer in the United States. But I took on that path. Uh, years later, I ended up going to law school. And it's interesting, when I show people my law school graduation picture, they used to wonder in my law office in LA why I had two pictures of myself up, because it was next to that picture of my father graduating Sen, um, uh, Saigon University Law School in the 1970s. It's one of the strong connections I have to carrying on my father's legacy in a new country where he could not do the same. That led me to a 21-year career in the IP and digital technology arenas at the start of the dot-com movement in the 1990s. And is what led me to blockchain eventually when my clients started exploring Bitcoin and virtual currencies after Bitcoin and blockchain emerged. And an interesting full circle connection in my life, just a few months ago, earlier this summer, I was invited back by the Vietnamese government, the Ministry of Communications, and the Vietnam National Internet Center to deliver a keynote address about the power combined of blockchain technology in BSV and the internet with the new IPv6 protocol that's emerging around the world. And the reason this is so interesting connecting all the dots in my life is that you have to understand I'm the youngest son of a federal judge who had to flee a country because their government was collapsing and the country had fallen. And with the experience and career journey I've had with the opportunities I had in the United States, I got invited back by the government my family left to help them advance their technology movement, much like you're trying to do here in Nigeria. And on top of that, the event was held in Da Nang, one of the third, uh, the third largest city in Vietnam that people don't hear about as, as much. And it was the last place my father was stationed as a judge before my family left the United States. It's these full circle moments that provide me connection to not just my father as a family member, but lessons that I bring into my journey in the blockchain space about how to use this technology not just to make money, not just to create transparency and truth, but to connect us as humans. Because if we don't do that, none of this is worth it at all. So I am pleased to be representing a whole new mission in the blockchain world, which is very simple, but it's to make blockchain actually useful. We don't hear about it enough, and I've spent the last years of my professional life doing it, because I want to see a world where we're not talking about just cryptocurrency, but instead we have a global network, the blockchain, which is just a time-stamped ledger of events in history, payments. I send a payment to the Director General from anywhere across in the world. I record that I sold my vehicle to you, and we recorded it on a certain date, a particular block in the blockchain and we carry out, in sequence, events in history. And because this data record keeping system is publicly available, it's not just kept by one company in their Amazon servers, it's not controlled by one bank, we can all look at this transaction history and create a more powerful engagement world for all of us. So it's something that I've been really working on for the past few years, um, and what I want to describe for you is a world in which these connections come up all across the world. So with the blockchain, we will have a world where instead of just having a transaction history that's controlled by a bank, we can actually have a ledger. You can put your data on the ledger and the data can actually continue to be um, accessed by anyone across the world. You can send micropayments to anyone across the world to be able to see things on the ledger, to read music, to get movies, to engage with your healthcare data or your government data. So what does this mean about creating a better world and more opportunities for you all here in Nigeria? Well, it begins with new ways to earn in which we can connect with things such as the whole game environment and the game world. You had heard earlier that we need to make money doing this, and I absolutely agree. And so one of the examples I want to give you over the next minutes is a series of projects, ventures across the world that I've been involved with in my role as BSV president, or now in my new capacity helping build companies around the world that are using blockchain technology to create more connection. For example, Coda is an API marketplace for developers. Most developers write code, they upload it to a repository such as GitHub, they allow other people to access and use it, but then they don't get paid anything. 
Well, using the micropayment efficiency of BSV, because it costs only one one hundredth of a US cent to send a payment anywhere in the world, some uh, entrepreneurial young people in Australia created Coda, which won one of our BSV hackathons. It's a marketplace. So as a developer, you upload your code to this marketplace, kind of like an eBay. If someone else uses your code, they pull it through what are called APIs, and for every API pull they use of your code, they pay you in tiny amounts of money and micropayments. It allows freelance developers to use blockchain and digital currency to actually make money from their work product, connecting them to a broader global economy. Haste Arcade is a startup out of the United States that I have been pleased to know. And they're using the power of these micropayments to change how you could actually earn from video games. For those of you who remember the old arcade games I used to play when I was in university, I'd go to the arcade, I would stick a US quarter into the machine, I'd play Pac-Man or Street Fighter or whatever, and if you were really good, you could put your initials at the top of the leaderboard. But you didn't make any money, well now you can. They've created an innovative concept called an instant leaderboard payout system, ILP, where you pay to play a video or online game, and if you get to the top of the leaderboard, for every person who comes after you, if they don't beat your score, you get a tiny fraction of the amount of money they paid for, instantly deposited in tiny micropayments to digital asset wallets. And any game developer, if you've got a game out there and you want to use this, you can connect to them using this SDK, which is a software development kit. You don't have to build this functionality yourself. It is a way for you to connect, literally, to a platform that allows people all across the world as game players to earn small amounts of money or other rewards tokens in a new powerful way. And so, um, in addition to this, we have all kinds of other uh, applications that are emerging across the world. In Pakistan, where I've spent a lot of time this year engaging with government and companies on blockchain use, GameStorm Studios is a, one of the largest mobile game studios in the world. It has published over a thousand games on the main app stores, such as the Apple and Play stores. Well, they've been working with our organization when I was at the BSV Association to begin implementing these micropayment capabilities as well as NFTs into their games. So they have a Meta Street Apes game where you can actually play to earn using blockchain technology. They even have a Monster Trucks game because those are very popular in Pakistan where again, they're adding not just NFT capability but these micropayments allowing people to earn, connecting them to new opportunities to earn. You've heard a lot also about traceability, honesty, verifiability. And this is a world that we can connect to more with blockchain technology. And it's really critical in this case that a blockchain can scale and hold the data that's necessary to create these capabilities. So for example, um, uh, VHR, uh, excuse me, v, uh, VX Pass and VX Technologies, which I discussed yesterday, has a platform that allows the tracking of COVID vaccinations on the blockchain so that they're verifiable, so that if you're traveling between countries, you don't have to access the database of a different country. This is very important to create verifiability and the traceability of health records. But they're also moving to create verified personal records on the blockchain that again allow you, no matter where you are in the world, to connect to your data and for people to verify it accurately. VX Pass has already had partnerships across the world, including here in Africa, where they're really, really targeting growth. They were selected as the official app to manage the COVID vaccination rollout in Lesotho, and they're working also in Ghana and many other countries to expand use of their product for managing verified personal records of all types, not just health records. Supply chain management is another powerful way in which blockchain technology can connect us to truth and the provenance, the history of products. Unisat is a Norwegian um, company which has developed a supply chain management platform. Rather than having companies replace their major supply chain systems, such as Oracle or SAP, it integrates into those systems and sends data to them and onto the blockchain. So for example, their first product was focused on seafood, where they had a platform where you could trace the journey of Norwegian salmon from fish farm, to the logistics place, to distributor, to the retailer, and ultimately to a restaurant or grocery store. So if you're eating sushi and wanted to know whether that fish is very fresh, 
They be are building a consumer app so that you can actually trace the journey of the fish that lands on your plate. And in the future, they will allow you to trace all kinds of other information, whether where it was grown, whether are chemicals, whether produce is organic or not. So there's a lot of great uses for blockchain to connect you to this type of truth. And they're advancing by working with a company now in the Netherlands called Local to Local, which is implementing a solution of their platform to allow local farmers to trace the products that they produce, particularly organic products, uh, from farm to whole, ultimately to table. And we are so excited to also see companies in more advanced industries, such as Quantum Labs, which is based in Copenhagen, and they do clinical testing of what are called bioactive natural compounds, natural plants, other things that occur in nature that are being used for other more advanced purposes. And when you have any type of drug, or in this case, a bioactive compound that is ingested into the human body, governments such as the Food and Drug Administration in the United States require you to do clinical testing to verify that it's safe to use as a human being. Well, they're taking the data that's generated from these clinical tests and recording a hash, a digital fingerprint of them to the blockchain so that you as a consumer, the public, or a government regulator can instantly detect whether a company has tried to change the data, to cheat the system, as, as sometimes happens in the food and drug industry. And so that is a way to connect blockchain technology to truth. I'm also proud in my new life to be working with Mate Soul. It's a company of my colleague and friend Mohammed Salman Anjoum, um, based in Dubai, even though he's Pakistani. And it is providing solutions, being your friend, your mate for all kinds of enterprise blockchain solutions. I'll be joining the board of the company relatively soon. And it has a number of products that allow you to see and understand the power of blockchain for connecting to truth and human beings. It's working with the University of Sharjah on a project uh, sponsored by the BSV Association to create a platform to track academic credentials as well as professional certifications to prevent fraud, people from lying about when or whether they did get a certification. And they're using the blockchain to help people verify that truth in history across time. And it can do everything from educational certificates to micro certificates. The system involves participation of many industry players. And that's an important message I wanted to deliver to you today. When you want to advance blockchain in an industry, it requires getting different companies, government agencies, players in the sector to all participate. So they need the participation of the credential issuing authority, a university, the learner, the student or graduate, the higher level governing body, as well as a third party verifier. For example, the employer who wants to check on whether or not you really did get that certification. This is a perfect example of blockchain being used to connect us all to more truth, honesty, efficiency. They also have a product called InvoiceMate, using the blockchain to track the journey of invoices in real time so that it's faster to get them paid. You don't have to call up and say, did you get my invoice? It's stuck in the email with the accounts payable. When will I get paid? And they're using that authenticity and the truth of invoices in real time to help expedite the process for what's called invoice factoring. Invoice factoring is when people have invoices that have not been paid and they actually take a loan or get financing from the invoice. And uh, this happens in a lot of industries. And in the Islamic finance world, it's a very useful to get more access to capital. They've developed a solution that delivers this in a Sharia compliant way and won this award recently at the African Islamic Banking Awards. Again, using blockchain to allow connection not just to truth, but actually connection to more capital to help a business grow. Um, in addition, uh, I want to talk about something because someone asked me just a few minutes ago how this blockchain technology can help law enforcement. The Maitsol company is working with the Sindh Police Department in Pakistan to actually take their resource management system, which is the system which tracks data in a police station. For example, the inventory of firearms, how much ammunition is in stock, the vehicles that come in and out of a police station, and send that data to the blockchain to ensure verifiability in case people accuse the police department of corruption or people stealing ammunition or firearms or moving them out of the police station. Again, it's a great use case for connecting things to blockchain technology and truth. 
Um, and I think I have another video here. Um, okay, thank you. So next, I want to talk about how this is all connecting us as people to devices and each other around the world. You've heard today about IoT and connecting things to the smart everything of the world, but we're gonna live in a future where everything we own, everything we wear, is going to have some type of smart function technology. The Mate Soul company I'm working with is also working on a project with a company called MedDrop, which uses drones to actually deliver uh, long-range medical supplies. That creates all kinds of opportunities for risk in the delivery process. They're using a blockchain application to help keep track of the journey and also uh, and allow the delivery company, as well as the suppliers, to track things such as the traceability, trust of the products going from the distribution site to the ultimate patient. Again, connecting us all to a lot more efficiency and truth. They're using the same concept to work with a solar EV power generation and vehicle charging system in the Middle East, so that the devices in cars that are charged now, electric vehicles, will be sending data to the charging station to your mobile app, and that's all being managed with a blockchain application, which is how blockchain can connect us to the journey to a more environmental, energy efficient world. And in the world of specific IoT devices, one of my favorite people in this space is Daniel Keane from Australia. He lives in a section of Australia with a lot of greenery because he has an environmental consulting firm called Predict Ecology. And they've been working with one of the blockchain companies in our space uh, in Australia to actually send data from devices that he runs around putting on trees to record information about the tree that can be sent to the blockchain to track, for example, carbon sequestration, how much um, renewable energy might be created from planting more trees. This is a mapping of it in the city of Carnes in Australia, which he's doing to help deliver to the city a data system living on blockchain that they can use to make environmental decisions in the future. And we're moving in the internet world to adoption of IPv6, Internet Protocol version 6, because the world has run out of IP addresses. IPv4, which is predominantly used now, only enabled 4 billion total addresses. Not enough for all humans on the planet, let alone all the devices we have. Most of us have multiple devices. And we have more, and our cars will be connected. My belt might be having a smart device in the future. So IPv6 uses a more robust uh, addressing system that will allow the creation of, you can see this here, over 18 quintillion unique IP addresses. Enough IP addresses for every person, every animal, every plant, every rock, probably every grain of sand and more to have its own unique IP address. Why is this important, especially for the entrepreneurs out there? It means that in the future, with blockchain and digital payments, everything in the world will have the capability to connect end to end with a unique IP address to send data and micro payments to each other. So all of the things that are out there that can be made smart in our lives will have the capability of not just sending information through the blockchain, but tiny, tiny micro payments. And we'll see a predominantly wonderful future for that. My last set of examples is in the world connecting the physical and digital. The metaverse is a hot topic. And when we talk about metaverse, everyone thinks about just virtual environments. But I want to explain to you that a true metaverse requires a virtual environment with AR, VR, XR, but that it engages with what happens in the physical world. So if I'm standing on this stage and there's a replica of me in a virtual environment, what I do here should affect what happens there and vice versa. That requires a powerful blockchain to deliver all that. I was going to show you a video that um, demonstrates a platform that the Matesoul company has been developing to actually create service centers for government agencies that um, allow you to go get government services without having to physically go into the visa office to apply for a travel visa or go to the driver's license administration to renew your driver's license, creating things that are much, much more efficient. This is really useful because, first of all, the real metaverse is far, far away. We're going to go in stages and having service centers that emerge for people to use for useful functions will drive us to that first. 
Um, and they're working on a very unique project with a travel company out of Pakistan that is one of the authorized companies to coordinate travel of Muslim pilgrims every year to the Hajj pilgrimage. Um, and one of the reasons it's important to create a system like this is that it is very, very large the number of people who come in for that period of time. And if you can expedite the check-in registration process for those journeying earlier through a metaverse environment, you create a quicker, more efficient experience. They're also working to create, with the University of Sharjah, a metaverse concept that allows the preservation of Emirati arts culture, artifact, as NFTs that will be displayed in a metaverse environment. And in addition, the son of the founder is creating his own project called a Desiverse, which is a metaverse to help celebrate Indian and South Asian culture. Again, we're seeing the use of blockchain technology and metaverse in a way that allows us to connect not just with business, but with who we are where we come from. I sometimes wonder what it would have been like for my parents who felt very um, alienated in the 1970s and 80s in the United States with very few other Vietnamese people around. If they had had technology that allowed them to connect to their old country, to their old language, to their old food, would it have been better and easier for them? And I think it would have been. And so these kinds of concepts are not just about entertainment, they're really about connecting all of us to who we are as human beings and where we came from. This is the Funajik concept, which is a hospitality metaverse for hotels and the Hajj festival. This is a showing of the metaverse of the University of Sharjah. And as I mentioned yesterday, this is the first really big project I've announced through my new company, Blockchain for All, which is working on developing met arenas, um, physical places where we combine all of these metaverse experiences into one area. There's a lot of music and concerts happening already, such as with Justin Bieber. Um, he did his virtual concert a year ago. There's also a move to do things such as education and um, uh, even healthcare performances uh, and lectures in Metaverse. And we are having all kinds of um, new things such as esports, which are moving again to Metaverse, where people are having esports competitions in stadiums and then broadcast them essentially into virtual environments. And theaters, even live theater performances, people are thinking about taking what's on stage to a Metaverse environment. The core team involved is me and my two friends, Ketan Makwana and Michael Jacobson, who is a world renowned live uh, entertainment entrepreneur. We have a plan that they launched and they were happy to invite me to join them in it, um, which is to build five physical arena complexes around the world where we will begin next year in London with 100 million US dollars already funded to build that site. A second one, which we're planning the UAE, and I was just there a couple of weeks ago to begin discussions to find a site for that. Then Singapore, Sydney, and Miami. The sites will have more than just entertainment. Let me show you an example of what we think the arena or theater will look like, which is a vertical screen instead of chairs like you're sitting in, pods, kind of like the Star Wars Senate for those of you who are Star Wars fans, with haptic floors which respond to noise, music, so you can feel, for example, through your shoes or your feet, sensory sp sprays, um, connections for VR, AR headsets and devices, so that you can watch a live performance or something filmed and actually have what you are experiencing in a physical location interact with the virtual metaverse, connecting the physical and the digital. And so we'll be able to host live events, other arenas, but we want to do more than just have a performance space. We want to create production services and studios. There will be what are called volumetric studios with cameras that go around 360 degrees to create filming, even live stream, of a truly 3D experience as well as digital production studios. We also want to include education hubs where we start creating centers of excellence to educate a next generation of creative professionals to actually work in the metaverse space and even incubation of startups. There will be connected hotel, which we will not build. Uh, we will have hotel partners that build and finance a hotel. In London, the Marriott Group is committing to be that hotel partner. We're really excited to bring this as a way to connect all of these things I've talked about, blockchain, IoT, metaverse, entertainment, 
commerce, um, digital payments, all in one, one place. So I'm really excited to get that going. It's a really major project that we hope will be uh, going on. Uh, it's also partnering with one of the blockchain companies in the BSV space, Transmira, which does AR, VR work, and will be providing what's called the digital twinning of physical environments and cities so that you can see it. Okay. Um, so it's really exciting to be talking about all these things. And I give you all these examples, not just to show you the kinds of work I've been doing around the world, but really to inspire the people in this room, right? I hope, in addition to the government and business leaders here, there are a lot of young people who are wondering, where do I get started? What should I do? And I give you these examples to open your mind as to the possibilities, which are vast, of what blockchain technology can actually deliver for something useful in the world and to connect us more and more in the world. And while I finish, I'm going to ask them if they can get my last video up at all. Um, if not, I will wrap up soon. Can you tell me that? Um, and I really hope that this conversation I've just had with you and the lessons I learned about connecting the dots in my life from law to blockchain technology to being from Vietnam to the United States to here around the world inform us of what we can do with this technology to connect us to truth, that can connect us to who we are as people, that can connect us to more business, more opportunities to make money, new ways to earn. It's why I created my new business blockchain for all to help advance all of these interests. If you're interested, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm pretty active there at Jimmy Wynn SV. And uh, I want to leave, assuming they tell me they can't get it up and running, um, with just this final thought. So while I have a few moments to wrap up, I do want to thank our host for having us here, the uh, inspiring Director General. I travel around the world um, and talk with governments all across the world, from Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bahrain, you know, Asia. And I must tell you, I have not met a government agency leader as more advocating, um, embracing, and inspirational in his belief in the power of blockchain technology than your NIDTA Director General. So please give him a hand. Uh, and I also want to thank my friends at Dominium, who are the BSV ambassadors for West and East Africa, who are Jeffrey Wailowasu and Mohamed Ibrahim Yega for inviting me here and hosting this event. I've known them for years, for over four or five years. Um, a lot of people, I would say, in the Western countries we work with, in the UK and the US, I think didn't quite get them at first. Uh, I had the patience to listen to them, to be willing to support them. And I'm so happy that they're doing this because for years they told me, Jimmy, we really want to run a big blockchain event in Nigeria. They believe this country has the power to really advance using this technology. And uh, they've worked hard to make this happen. I'm happy I got to be here. I flew quite around the world over the last uh, week or so from Dubai to LA to back here to be here. But I'm honored that they wanted to have me here because you need champions in a country to make things like this work. Um, it's about to get up when you get a chance. Tell me when it's up. Uh, you really need champions, and they are great champions, just like your director general from NIDTA. You, would you start that over, please, and play it? Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's my vision for blockchain. It's a big vision of a distributed ledger with transactions organized into blocks connected across time to give us a more connected world. But those blocks contain more than just data and payments as we do. They contain the most powerful commodity of our digital world, information, our identity, connections in life. And therein lies the bigger vision, the fusion of data, money, and who we are in our life experiences into one. One protocol that can power applications for government, enterprise, and consumers. One universal source of truth, that opens data silos and opens data transparency. One timestamp ledger that traces our products, our assets, our rights, and the very sustainability of our planet. One network that makes our cities, communities, countries smarter, more autonomous, stronger. One blockchain that connects everything, everyone, everywhere, whether you're from Australia, South Africa, the United Kingdom, 
USA, Pakistan, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, where I began, Vietnam, or Nigeria. Let's use blockchain to create one world connected.